veriditas of just expanding life outwards to worship growth in the biological sense. Hey there, everybody. My name is Sofia Sanchez, a bio developer in the making. I love, absolutely love communicating science and particularly bioengineering ideas and stories online. So you can check out the link to my blog and podcast in the description below. This episode is with Elliot Hirschberg, a PhD student of genomics at Stanford University, a research analyst at Not Boring Capital, and the writer behind The Century of Biology, which is a Substack publication that you should definitely check out if you haven't already. So actually, The Century of Biology was the reason why I was so excited about having this conversation with Elliot and the reason why I found him online in the first place. Without further ado, let's get started with the first out of five questions. Elliot, are you a solar punk optimist? We can see something on your background. There were some previous generations that like thought really hard about this, and there was a lot of optimism for space technology and like post space race. And I feel like it's important to sort of think on those time scales and like have that kind of aspiration for humanity. I think it's I think it's really cool. So I'm also definitely like a big sci-fi nerd. Question number two: Genomics is actually quite broad. So I think we all want to know a little bit more about your research, what you do, how that looks like. Can you tell us about that, please? There's sort of been, you know, interesting discoveries of what are called biosynthetic gene clusters of these units within genomes that can um, synthesize natural products. And so there's this question of if you're going to do direct synthetic chemistry to explore things, um, or are you going to look for, for sort of where it's occurred in nature. And I think that um, in general, like one of my uh, views is that there's like so many amazing things to discover within all of these, um, these genomes that like we should build the sort of algorithms and approaches and, and tools um, to, to find them. It's like I, I spent a long time on genome browsers. Now we're moving on to one of those topics. And I'm talking about scientific publishing and academic funding, at least in the life sciences. Everyone says it sucks, but I guess a feasible solution, like it, it looks far away still. So I wanted to get Elliot's thoughts on just that overall, which could be some interesting solutions. We've heard about Desai and preprints, which is actually the topic for one of his recent essays. Here's what he said. I would consider myself like cautiously optimistic, um, mm -hmm. where I, I view it as like there's a sort of set of um, super exciting like institutional experiments that are being run right now in terms of um, how to structure and fund science, like what Alexi Guzzi in, in Boston is doing new science and like thinking about you know empowering young people to really drive their, their projects super early in their careers, have the resources they need. There's Arcadia and the East Bay. That's what they call like a research and development company. They're like exploring how to publish and do all this stuff. Where I would put sort of Web3 and, and this DSI stuff is like in that bucket of um, different experiments that are being run in structuring science, like VitaDAO, that's like funding real projects and doing stuff. And so I think they totally deserve you know, to be given credit for that and like put in the bucket of like really interesting experiments and like in, in structuring and funding science. We have the magazine structure in machine learning. They all post preprints. And then those preprints are submitted to, to conferences. And there's a much more rapid turnaround on, on conferences to sort of assess what the top preprints are, the ones that get the big conference um, presentations. Web3 is trying to create representations of, of sort of digital scarcity, but a conference paper is like using physical scarcity where like only the best papers can end up actually like being on stage and being presented. It's, it's worth looking at how other fields publish, um, how other fields use preprints. But I think in, in general, it's just a huge win that we're even at the stage now in life sciences using preprints so in such a standard way. 
Then I found Elliot online because of his great Substack publication, The Century of Biology. I think that a lot of us, even people outside of the life sciences academic field are quite grateful for how um, clear and just interesting his writing is, you know, not only touching on preprints and what's happening at the very edge of the field, but actually some like, you know, even again, solar punk, biopunk ideas like Viriditas expanding life throughout the universe, which is just so inspiring, honestly, to read. So that said, I really wanted to know more about Elliot's creative process. And I know that if you are somehow into content creation, you will very much appreciate what he has to say. I would feel so excited if, you know, somebody reviewed my, like you did this cool highlight of my work and shared it. So it was really like kind of like for the scientists and also to lower the reading burden, you know, summarizing papers for other people in the field. But I also just got exposed to like a totally different world. I didn't really realize like the whole newsletter ecosystem and like the the excitement within tech. And so like all of a sudden I had like way more people reading it than I thought and like investors reading it and like all these different people and like kind of founders. Um, and I feel like it was my my first real exposure to kind of VC. And Packy, who, who started Nap Boring, built it out of his newsletter first. And I similarly like I've really gotten closer to, to investing um, from, from really like deeply writing first, genuinely liking the thing that you're doing enough that it's um, in the category of like deep enjoyment and like really giving you something and not taking something away. I write every single morning and it's amazing how much things compound if you just do them small amounts every single day, like over time. The typical recommendation for, for being a good writer is to be a good reader, which I agree with. I read a lot. I've read a lot for a long time. I also think like doing stuff is really valuable for science writing, um, where like I noticed this recently, like Nico McCarty, who writes Code on Magazine, another amazing um, science newsletter. He was like, he was like doing a PhD in science. Like he, he's like done a bunch of science and it comes through. Like one of my favorite writers, Hugh Howey, has this... Um, this quote about writing that it's like a little bit like being a, a coffee filter. We have like all this stuff kind of pouring through you. So you have to have like stuff mm -hmm. flowing through to like write interesting things, go on trips, talk to people, do science. Like it, I think that that all adds a lot of value. Last but not least, Elliot is right now at the very edge of both worlds, venture capital and academia. So he has, I guess, these insights on biotech startups and entrepreneurship and what investors are looking for in the life sciences and bioengineering. So I wanted to get his thoughts on to PhD or not to PhD, because after all, he's also doing a PhD. I think biotech certainly is like more credential obsessed than other disciplines in tech. And that's like probably not great if we want to become like a mature and widespread industry. I think like I'm of the opinion and of the generation that like tech has been this incredible existence proof that young people can do shit, right? That we can like build <laughs> things, get things done, like build massive, you know, generational companies. And that is it. I really hope you've enjoyed this episode that you've learned as much as I did from Elliot. Go and follow him on Twitter and go and follow me for more bioengineering stories at Sophia S. Bio. You can also find the links to all my writing and podcast episodes down in the description. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.